but then go talk about him like a f- dog with that goddamn queen, Clyde Davis. Ten months after her death stunned fans around the world, a tabloid report raises the outlandish prospect that Whitney Houston may have been murdered. Ray J left, the drug dealer came in, the next person that come in is Brandy, and she find Brandy dead, and Clive says, Whitney would have wanted us to party on anyway. You must be out of your- Jaguar Wright has been holding it down and airing out everyone she believes is involved in the deaths of Whitney Houston and her daughter, Bobby Christina. And it looks like it's now Ray J's turn to catch heat for allegedly helping Clive Davis sacrifice both Whitney and Bobby. Clive Davis, Diddy's mentor, is back in the spotlight for all the wrong reasons. And Jaguar is dropping fresh details on how Clive, Diddy, and Ray J might all be tied up in Whitney's passing. The talk about Clive sacrificing Whitney and then throwing a Grammy party as some kind of ritual has been circling the block for a minute, but Jaguar is now bringing the heat and spilling more tea on how Diddy and Ray J might have been in on Clive's scheme, getting their hands dirty and covering it all up. But hold up, there's more. The word is out about another wild throwdown that Diddy threw the night Whitney left us. And it sounds like Diddy and Ray J's links to Clive Davis run deeper than just the regular industry hustle. So how exactly is Ray J connected to all this talk about Clive sacrificing Whitney? And does this mean those rumors are true about Ray J and Diddy being Clive's boy toys? Ooh. And then the next thing you know, um, she's dead. Ray J was the last person to see her alive. He let the drug dealer in. The internet has been lit up with tales about Diddy and Ray J supposedly holding it down for Clive Davis. And these aren't your regular stories. People are throwing around some really messed up accusations from ritual essay of boys and men to blood sacrifices. Let's break it down though. So Ray J and Diddy have been tight for the longest time. And there's a whole bunch of footage out there showing Ray J chilling at Diddy's mansion. All right, don't forget where you come from. Yeah, love. My guy in the building. Hey, yo. This guy right here, one of the hip hop entrepreneur, young legends. He's in, he's in my gang. He gets money. Yes, he does. Yes. Now, as for Diddy and Clive, Clive was there for Diddy when things went down with Bad Boy Entertainment after Andre Harrell gave Diddy the boot from Uptown Records. And word on the block is that Diddy had to do some serious bowing down, like literal knees hitting the floor kind of stuff for Clive. Now, rumor has it, allegedly, Diddy got on his knees for Clive Davis in 1994. Jaguar Wright also implied in a recent interview that Diddy's close relationship with Clive is the reason why everyone fears Diddy. What do you think he did to get that veil of armor, that protection? Because if everybody knew and nobody was doing nothing, he was walking around with immunity for all these years. He got what himself happened? a tough Jew. And you pumped this little freak Diddy up. And you let him go in them streets, didn't you? See, Jaguar has been spilling the tea for a while now on how these big time music moguls have each other's backs when it comes to covering up some serious dirt. And when it comes to Clive Davis, there has been a story hanging around forever claiming one of his supposed crimes is Whitney Houston's murder. Whitney passed on February 11th, 2012, just hours before she was set to perform at Clive's Grammy Awards bash in the Beverly Hilton Hotel. The official story says Whitney's assistant found her unresponsive in the bathtub face down. But Jaguar Wright later claimed that it was Brandy, Ray J's sister, who found Whitney and that Ray left Whitney's room shortly before all that went down. What's also suspicious is that forensic pathologist Cyril Wett later revealed that the water in Whitney's bathtub was extremely hot and taken a bath in water that hot would be painful. Wecht said the water was around 93 degrees and he concluded that Whitney somehow accidentally fell into the bathtub and drowned. But he couldn't say for sure if something happened to Whitney before she was submerged in the water. Wecht told ABC News, I think she fell into this very hot water. That accounts for a little bruise that was seen in the left forehead area, some other pressure markings on the face, including the slight laceration of the lip, and the fact that she was lying face down. I think that this lady fell into the water. She was unconscious, dead, or dying when she fell into the tub. So if Ray J was one of the last people to see Whitney alive, it surely means he could answer some of those questions.
questions. See, there's been a lot of speculation that Clive Davis used Ray J to get Whitney hooked on drugs again after she left rehab. And then Layola Brown, Whitney's ex, Bobby Brown's sister, also called out Ray J saying that shortly before Whitney's body was discovered, Ray left the Beverly Hilton dodging the cameras and acting suspicious. Layola straight up called Ray J a runner boy, implying that he was Whitney's plug and gave her a bad batch of something that led to her demise. What makes this whole situation even more disturbing is that Whitney's only child, daughter Bobby Christina, died three years after Whitney, and she too was discovered unconscious in a bathtub full of water. Bobby Christina's body was discovered by her fiance Nick Gordon and the crazy part is that Jaguar later claimed Clive met up with Nick shortly before Christina's passing. And get this, Nick Gordon also died from a suspected OD three years after he was found liable for her death. Now according to Jaguar, Clive and Whitney had a big fight just days before the Grammys and allegedly Bobby Christina witnessed everything. And yeah, then yeah, it's Grammy happened. time. That happened. And her and Clive had a fight two days before. And from what I was told, Bobby Christina was present for some of that fight. And then the next thing you know, um, she's dead. Ray J was the last person to see her alive. He let the drug dealer in but she was sober, right? What's also sketchy is that it was initially reported that Bobby Christina didn't have any drugs in her system when she was found in the bathtub. A police source told CNN at the time that Bobby was still alive and breathing when they took her to the hospital and also added that investigators had found nothing to indicate it was drugs or alcohol related. But they later changed the narrative and the official cause of death was determined to be immersion associated with drug intoxication. The doctors placed Bobby Christina in an induced coma after they determined her brain function was significantly diminished and the family decided she should be taken off life supporting medications. Bobby Christina died in hospice care on July 26, 2015 at age 22 after she spent six months on life support. But check this out. Police later arrested a woman for posing as a nurse and giving hospice care to Bobby Christina. According to the police reports, a woman by the name of Taiwo Sobamowo was charged with forgery, theft by deception, and practicing as a professional registered nurse without a license. Now going back to the Clive Davis, Diddy, Ray J connection, while all that chaos was going down on the night Whitney died, Clive was getting his party on at the same hotel knowing that Whitney's dead body was upstairs. According to CBS News, Whitney's body remained in the hotel room for hours after after she was pronounced dead. And meanwhile, downstairs, Clive was throwing this big bash with celebs drinking and dancing like it was all good. And then another report spilled that Whitney's body was not removed until just moments before the party ended, a little after midnight, which further fueled the speculation that Whitney's death was a sacrifice and that Clive wanted her dead body to be in the same building while he and the rest of the industry were celebrating. By the way, one of the people who was celebrating with Clive was Diddy and Clive actually picked Diddy to give a speech at the party, supposedly as a tribute to Whitney. But Diddy and Whitney weren't exactly tight. So why in the world would Clive choose him, of all people who were there, to step up and speak about Whitney's death? See, Diddy was more connected to Whitney's ex, Bobby Brown, who, as we all know, used to put hands on Whitney. In fact, Diddy straight up put the blame on Whitney, saying she did Bobby dirty and threw him under the bus over their substance issues. Yeah, right. man. Whitney Houston comeback. Man, I rocked with Whitney. I don't like the way she threw Bobby under the bus, though, man. I mean, if we gonna be smoking crack together, then then, then at the same time, then then, then that, that's what we did, and we did it, and we shouldn't have did it. So why would Clive loop in someone like Diddy with all that history and messiness to talk about Whitney's legacy? By the way, check out how nervous Diddy got when he appeared on The Ellen Show just days after Whitney's passing, and Ellen asked about that speech he gave at Clive's party. I know that you were the first, uh, one of the first ones at Clive's party to speak about Whitney. Mm -hmm. passing the other day yes. and uh, that that was um, did you know her well yes I did mm -hmm. um, I actually when I was when I was growing up in the music industry before I had success I somehow got on her wedding invitation so I was at her wedding but, but I didn't really know her. But wait, there's more to this craziness. After Clive's Grammy party was over, Diddy didn't go home. He decided to throw another bash at the Playboy Mansion. And get this, the party was so off the charts that Diddy ended up in the hospital. According to this article originally published by Entertainment Weekly on February 13th, 2012, bad boy impresario Sean P. Diddy Combs was hospitalized last night for a severe migraine that developed after he returned home from the post-Grammy party he hosted at the Playboy Mansion. So 
you're telling me Clive and Diddy were so devastated by Whitney's passing that partying just seemed like the most natural way to cope? But we can't forget about Ray J because reports recently popped back up about him sending SA threats at Fabulous and talked about sending some of his men friends who like men to violate Fab. That whole team, nigga, I'ma smack the shit out that bitch. Now we're gonna try to get Fab now, on the line and squash the Get Fab on the line right now. I'll smack the shit out that nick. You can't I'm smack him over the phone, right? But... On the phone, that light nick, and they're gonna f that nick. Get that nick over and stick it in that nick. All right, all right, all right, all right. This audio of Ray J throwing threats at Fabulous came back in the mix right when all these messed up allegations about Diddy started circling in the aftermath of Cassie's lawsuit. And here's a twist. Fans pointed out how Diddy's been acting kind of sketchy around Fab before, especially on that Drink Champs interview when he pressed him to answer why they never partied together. But I'm talking about for your birthday. Huh? Why won't you party with me for your birthday, man? I'm, I, yeah, we we party for my birthday before you came to my party. You no, know? no, but me and you ain't never really party. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Eyes, eyes, brother. Oh, eyes, eyes, uh, eyes, uh, eyes, uh, eyes, uh, eyes. I understand. Uh, uh. Fans are now putting two and two together, saying Ray J might have been talking about getting Diddy to violate Fabulous. And now Jaguar Wright just added more fuel to all these speculations by implying that these powerful industry men use SA against other men as a form of control. Jaguar also implied that Clive Davis is protecting. Diddy because Clive allegedly did all kinds of messed up things to Diddy. The same kind of things Diddy is now being accused of doing to others, both men and women. There is a difference between homosexual relationship, consensual, mm. and forced side mm. for control. Black men are the most disrespected men in this country. But if you're willing to get down on your knees and open up your mouth wide, Mm. You become a part of an elite crew. Now everybody's afraid of you. Now everybody owes you. Fans are now diving deep into this whole situation, and a lot of them are convinced that both Diddy and Ray J got the real lowdown on what really happened to Whitney and Bobby Christina. One fan said, let's keep it very real. It's becoming obvious that Diddy and Ray J are in a thruple with Clive. Ray J and Diddy both get on their knees. And someone else wrote, Diddy, you gonna pay for your deeds. You and Ray J sold out and gave Whitney up for sacrifice. We see you. Your day coming, three, Clive, Ray J, and yourself. But what about you? Do you think think Clive Davis actually sacrificed Whitney with Ray J's help? Let me know in the comments and then check out this next video.